Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. We're back in the basement at our little workbench and we're going to uh, fiddle around with some more old radios today. So let's get going. All right, this is a radio that we tested previously and we determined that it, it works, it functions, but the the push buttons are, are sticky and, and kind of lazy. So we're going to open it up and see if we can give them some lubrication and get them working. All the push buttons are working nicely now. I, I cleaned them up and lubricated them. Now we'll just double check that this radio still works. Well, the light works. There we go, 680 news. The tone control works. Perfect. We can close this up and it's a good radio. This here is another old AM Ford radio uh, with the same problems as the other one. It's just kind of bunged up from sitting. The, the push buttons are stiff and sticky. Um, it, it did work. I, I know this one works. And I checked the number on the side of it. D1, you can tell that's a 1971 radio. So I looked it up. This radio is for 1971 Pinto or Maverick. So what we'll do with it, this came from somewhere, um, either a desert state or, or Western Canada, maybe, where there's a lot of dust and sand and stuff. And it was a mess inside. I blew a lot of the dust and crap out of it. And we're going to go ahead now and clean these buttons up lubricate the mechanism and see if we can get the push buttons work because this one's like the last one uh the radio works great but the push buttons are all stuck so here's this one sorted back out i wish i could get a little better am reception in my basement here but that's as good as it gets push buttons all work That's a good radio. I might add that this one is also a little bit different than the other Ford radios um, that I've dealt with anyway. <clears throat> Pardon me. In that the, um, the dial light, the illumination, is actually attached to the switch here. If you can see, it's hard to tell because the lights are on in here. But when I turn this on, when you turn the radio on, the dial illumination comes on. It's not hooked to the dash lights like it would it would be in, I don't know, most cases. I found that a little strange. Now we're going to have a go at the 64 Galaxy radio. Um, it, I'm pretty sure this one works, but it's got a couple of issues. Number one, you turn the tuner and nothing happens in here. You can see there it's, it's turning, but nothing happens in there. So we're going to try... Um, our favorite cure for stuff like this, WD-40, and see what happens. So we've got our 64 Galaxy radio working pretty well. It, um, the push buttons all work. The volume and tone work. The only real issue I've got with it here is the, this shaft you can see is, is busted. Um, now... That being said, on these old radios, this this end is solid. All it is is the tuner. So you may be able to solder a pin in there to hold that, and this will be just fine. Last thing I have to do is try and figure out if the uh, dial light works. So here's our 64 Galaxy radio. All fixed up. Look at the dash lights. Isn't that nice? So it works. Good 
Beautiful. This will make somebody really happy. The reception's so bad in my basement here. If I hang on to it, I'm a better antenna than the antenna. So we're back in this guy. We've got the tuner working pretty well. The the uh, it goes back and forth now. I've got it lubricated and freed up a bit. Now we got to figure out um, what's up with the tape deck. So we're gonna try and get it out of there and see if we can service it at all. Well, as much as I love this little guy, I'm gonna have to give up on it. About all I can get working is the FM. The AM is not too bad, but the tape deck. Um, I tried getting it out of there, but it's all integrated with the, the tuner. And I'm not too good with these um, strings on the tuners. It, it'll get destroyed. It'll never work again. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but for now, it's just going to go on the back burner. So we've gotten inside our first eight track player here and I've gotten at the back of this plug to figure out what um, is what as far as connections go. So I could tell by looking at this red here, this is hot. Uh, the center one is ground. It is connected with a single strand to this one, which would be the, the ground for the speakers. And green and gray here are the outputs for the two channels. So we can get this thing hooked up and see if it works. So this 8-track player works just fine. It sounds really funny because uh, it needs a new belt, but I don't want to get I don't want to get in trouble with the copyright people, but you can hear put a little tension on the belt and it and it speeds up so we're good there the track selector works on it the volume and tone and balance controls all work this is a good unit it just needs a new belt so that's it for that one it's all back together it works as it should um, I made a diagram on the back of it so I don't forget the what wire goes in what hole and you can get Probably you can find a plug that'll plug into that, or you can just come up with something else. Next up is this one. It's an audio box. So we'll see what we can do with it. We'll get it opened up. And uh, it's got the same type of arrangement on the back for a plug. And we'll uh, see what we can do with this one. Let's get her opened up. Well, you can see here the belt is non existent, it's just gone. Um, we'll get that cleaned up and see if we can find a belt for it. And in the meantime, I'm going to flip it over and see if I can figure out how the heck to hook up the wires. I put the old stretched belt from the other one on it because, well, that's all I had. Maybe it'll work better on this one. And I've got the wires hooked up. I think how they need to go. Only time will tell. Where's the king? Here's the king. Okay, let's see here. Put power on. Hmm. Nothing happening. Let me have a look at it. So this thing works perfectly. It's playing away. I can't turn it up because it's, uh, you can see, it's the king and I'll get in trouble. But um, you can see here, individual tracks, individual lights for the four tracks. They all work. Perfect. All the controls work. This is awesome. Another great score. Last up is this Titan. It's a pretty heavy one. You can see here there's a tag on. It's been it's been in a shop and been repaired at some point. Uh, well, let's see if they did a good job and if this thing works. What's the connection on this one? 
Yeah, same type of plug. This one looks pretty decent inside. The belt is okay. They've all got the same mechanism in them, basically, this with this 1 to 10 on the flywheel. And the, so what we're going to do is turn the power on and then just tickle the... Yep, so far so good. Turn it off. Now we'll put the king in. And just tickle the power again. Yep, I say we've got it. <laughs> Another one that works perfectly, eh? Okay, now I have to do it with the volume turned off. I had music playing. Um, again, the copyright stuff. I can't have the music turned up. So, um, all the controls work just fine. And now we can, you can see, make sure our four track lights work. Track two, track three, track four. We've got another perfectly good working machine. That's awesome. Let me put it back together. Well, our workbench is looking a lot better now. We got all those darn radios out of the way. Now I'm going to have a fast look at my little power supply here. I'm very sad that this thing quit working. I used to use it when I was testing radios. It saved me dragging this thing in the house all the time. But as you can see, it's plugged in, it's turned on, and there's nobody home. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop the cover off of it and see if there's a fuse blown or something simple that we can fix. So all that's wrong with this thing is this here little fuse. It's a 5 amp fuse. So what I'm going to do, this one's actually soldered into the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out and put a fuse holder in so we've got a replaceable fuse. The original fuse here was soldered right to the board and I didn't want to really mess with that. So what I did is on the back side of it, I soldered a fuse holder to the board and that can just live in there and we can change the fuse easily now anytime we need to. Hopefully we won't have to. I, I might have just zapped it out accidentally and blown the fuse um, when I was testing something. So let's see if it works. Well, little red lights on indicating it's alive. So what we'll do, we'll just find something 12 volt to hook up to here and see if we can make it work. Now you do have to watch. This thing is limited to um, 3 amp continuous 5 amp surge. So we can't be, you know, hooking up blower motors to it and stuff like that. But small little things. Um, I'll probably just grab a car radio, plug it in and see if it lights up. So there's the first good sign. Our meter is showing 14 volts on the output. Let me find a radio or something. Yeah, perfect. It's running our 64 Galaxy radio. They all turn the volume down. You can see the dash lights are lit up, so it's got a little a little bit of load on it. That's good. Our little power supply is back. It is kind of staticky. I, I think it picks up a lot of noise from the from the transformer. Um, I don't think an FM radio would pick that up, but AM sure does. Anyway, I guess we can close that up and call it fixed. Now, during all this radio fixing and stuff, well, the lead from my meter broke. Sad day indeed. So I scrounged around and I found another one. It looks like all we have to do to make this one work is um, cut back that jacket there. See, that seems to be the only difference between the two. So I'm going to cut that off and see if this lead will go into here. There we go. Good as new. Well, here goes nothing. We've got our little power supply. We've got uh, an AM FM stereo radio and we've got our little amplifier. And we're going to see if this thing works. It's just a two channel amp, so it was pretty easy to hook up. Um, hopefully this little guy, three amps output is enough to run all this. I won't be turning it up too loud. 
I just want to see if I notice a difference when I turn on the amp. So here goes nothing. Everything is off. Put the power supply on. Good. First we'll put this on and see if we get uh, with the amp off if the sound goes through the Okay, so I got a station on. Let's see what happens if I turn on the amp. Nothing. The amp is dead. An hour. Peter Colton of Bradford, waiting on your call. Four one six. Yep, nothing happened in there. It works to go straight through, but when you turn it on, nothing. Dead or alive, you spin me round. Hmm. Well, so much for that. I guess it's e-waste. Well, that makes me happy. My hobby bench hasn't been empty like this in months. This is a good thing. So I can fill it all back up with more things to fiddle around with. Anyway, that was fun. Like I said earlier, I am no electronic guy. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I don't have a clue how any of this stuff works. All I can do is use my, my peepers here and see if I could see something physically wrong in there. And sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I'm able to change a belt. Sometimes the way the things are made, I, I'm just not. They are just not made to be serviced, some of these units. Anyway, we've got a lot of old radios back from the dead. And I, I don't know, I have this thing about old radios. I, I like them. So I've got a whole pile of Ford radios. Anybody need one? <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. And be sure to check out our next episode of the Claremont Classic Garage, where we'll be doing who knows what. Until then, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. So long.